So in this example, it is known that the frequency f of a stretched string depends on the mass per unit length m, the length of the vibrating wire l, and the force f used to stretch the wire. f is measured as the number of vibrations per second. Find the formula for f. So, the formula for f will be equal to some dimensionless constant, k, times by m to the power of alpha, times by l to the power of beta, times by f to the power of gamma. OK? So now we need to look at the dimensions of either side of this. Now, f is measured as the number of vibrations per second. So it would be like saying I've got three vibrations per second. So three per second. So the way you would write that is 3s to the minus 1. So the units here would just be t to the minus 1. That's all it would be. So the left-hand side is t to the minus 1. The right-hand side, the k can be ignored. It's dimensionless. Now, the m doesn't represent just mass. It is mass per unit length. So that is mass over length. Now, we could write that as m l to the minus 1. OK, and that's what I'll do. So m l to the minus 1, and that's to the alpha. Then we've got l. That's the length of the vibrating wire. So that's just a length. So L to the beta. Then we've got a force. Now a force is a mass times acceleration. So mass times acceleration meters per second per second. Now that's to the gamma. OK, so we have T to the minus 1 is equal to. Now the masses we have m to the alpha times by m to the gamma, so alpha plus gamma in the index. Then we have L, minus 1 times alpha, so minus alpha plus beta plus gamma when you multiply it out. Then we've got T, and the only T is over here, so minus 2 gamma. Now, we have no m's on the left-hand side, so that's telling me that alpha plus gamma must be 0. We have no l's on the left-hand side, so minus alpha plus beta plus gamma must also be 0. We do have t to the minus 1 on the left-hand side, so the minus 2 gamma has to be equal to minus 1. Now, that's telling me that gamma has to be a half. If gamma's a half, then alpha would have to be minus a half. Now, if alpha's minus a half and gamma is a half, we will have minus minus a half. So one half plus a half is one. So beta would have to be minus one. Solving those three simultaneous equations. Now, if they were any more horrible than that, you could always put them into your calculator to solve them. Okay? But that one's relatively easy to do. So we've got the alpha, we've got the beta, we've got the gamma. So, therefore, f is equal to k times m to the alpha. So m to the minus a half, then l to the minus 1 then f to the gamma, so f to the half. So this is our formula. Now we could rewrite that as f equals uh, k over l, and then times by the square root of f over m. Okay, and there's our formula.